Welcome to Bible 180, Job. In the Heavenly Command Center, God proudly proclaims that Job is righteous. However, the angel Satan comes forward and says, Job wouldn't be righteous if his life stunk. So God says, go ahead, test it out. So Satan, first of all, takes away all Job's possessions and riches. Then he takes away his family. And finally, he takes away his health. Job will not curse God, but he is bitterly sad. His three friends come to him and say, the wicked never prosper. It's good to be disciplined by the Lord to repent and admit your guilt. Job says, I haven't done anything wrong. The friends are like, you did do something wrong. And Job's like, I didn't. And it goes back and forth. There's some good zingers and a lot of explanation, but that's the general gist. Job's frustrations escalate throughout the book. He maintains his innocence. On the one hand, he says that the wicked are fleeting. But on the other hand, he says that wisdom can't be found anywhere. In the holes, in the earth, in precious metal, in skies, or in any living thing. Job questions eventually turned to doubt, and his doubts turned to challenging what God is doing. Then a new guide, Elihu, shows up and interjects, who can understand what God is doing? You're complaining that God is unjust, is rebellion against God. Finally, Yahweh himself shows up, but instead of providing answers, he has his own questions. Does Job know how the tides work or how to order the sun, moon, and stars? Can Job understand precipitation or keep it running properly? Can he fathom the majesty of the ostrich or eagle or hawk? Yahweh says, can you correct me? And Job admits that his questions are wrong-headed, but Yahweh says, I'm not finished with you yet. Can you mete out justice or determine right and wrong? Can you humble the wicked or ensure that the righteous are taken care of? Don't try to tell me how to do my job. Job says, you're right. I have no right to challenge you. However, in the end, Job ends up being blessed with material possessions and family once again. It's harrowing and dangerous to try to use verses from Job out of context. We're told up front that Job is righteous and innocent, didn't deserve the sufferings he endured. Where Job went wrong was to assume that because this natural world is sometimes unfair and unjust, that must mean that God is unfair or unfit to rule. The backstory of Satan and God is reminded there's often more going on than we could observe or interpret. And in trying to interpret the world's events or our own suffering is more often than not a fool's errand. It's God who judges us, not vice versa. This world is far more complicated than our philosophical musing or angsty questions could ever take into account. While Job does not answer the question of why evil or suffering exists, we are encouraged to wait for the Lord. Job offers us a couple of sneak peeks that God will come to us. And while his power is overwhelming, in Jesus we see that God has not overlooked suffering, but endured it for our salvation.